this belt than any one of the belts in our fleet. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the basics about some of the different types of fish that we catch here, some of the techniques that we use, uh, and uh, give you guys a few pointers on how to catch them. Do you guys know what kind of fish we catch around here? Yeah. What do you catch? Helper bass, yellowtail, yellowtail, tuna. Yeah, those are some of them right there. We also get barracuda, halibut, and where did my weights go? Ah, and uh, here, don't bother those And guys, there are different techniques for fishing and catching the different fish. So I'm going to go over some of the setups first that we use. Now, the first one I'm going to tie is uh, the regular dropper loop, not dropper loop, excuse me, the rubber core setup. Now, we're going to go over uh, tying a hook. Who knows how to tie a hook? What kind of knot do you use? Ah, okay. I'm going to teach you guys a basic knot that's probably like one of the most strongest knots there are. It's called San Diego Fisherman's <coughs> Knot. Now, where is uh, Robbie? Robbie! Here, George, you want to get a little picture? Nobody's on the dock here. Here we go. Guys, this is Deckhand Robbie right here. He's going to be my assistant right now. He's going to hold the rod for me. Okay, guys, now, you see this? It's very important. Whenever you're tying a hook on, whenever you're around a hook, whenever you're uh, putting a bait on, anytime you got a hook, you always got to be real careful because we don't want to get stuck with these. It's happened to me before plenty of times. It hurts. Now, see that right there? You guys know what that is? That's the barb, yes, it's absolutely correct. That's the business end, so you always be careful of the barb on the hook. And on the other end, what's that? Anybody know what that is? Yeah. I'll give you a hint. What's behind my sunglasses? I. I, yes. Brilliant. Ah, you get an A for the day. Yay. You're, uh, you're on the ball. Okay, guys, now, of course, the line goes through the eye of the hook. Everybody knows that. Boom. Just when you get to be my age, it's kind of tough to put the line through the eye of the hook. All right, there we go. Okay, you see how that's sliding through there? Okay, now what you want to do is you want to hold that rod just like that. All right, it's this is a little trick. You put it on like the guide. Now, you guys see how I got these two lines right here? You guys see that? Can you guys see it over there? Okay. Now, see how I got my index finger right here? I put both lines on there just like that. See these two? Now, with this one right here, I'm gonna wrap it around both those lines. Five to seven times. Five times if you're in a hurry, <laughs> seven times if you've got time to time. You guys see that little triangle that the two lines made right above my finger? See that little triangle right there? You guys see that little triangle? Right there? With this open end, stick it right through here. Now, pull your finger out. Bring it down like this, okay? So you're not pulling the rod over. This way you got some stability on there. Then what you want to do is tug on this line a little bit, tug on this line a little bit, and bam, it cinches it right down. See how easy that now was the time? It takes a little practice, plus you guys can pick up like a little knot book or something like that, and I'll show you all different kinds of knots in there. And if you're ever bored instead of playing a video game, you might want to practice tying knots next time you go fishing when you're playing with all your fishing gear. All right, now. Okay, guys. These are called needle nose pliers. Not only do they come in handy when you're taking fish off the lines, but. They also got that little line cutter right there. See that? So, whenever you're trying to hook, you can cut the excess line off like that. Check it out. You can stick it in your back pocket and look cool like a dead man. <laughs> okay, now. Ah. Got stuck in the hand well. Does anybody know what kind of sinker this is? What kind of weight or a sinker? 
No, no. Not a sheep like one, though. No. Yes. A weight. Yes, it is a weight. What type of weight? Does anybody know? Uh, I'll give you a hint. There's rubber in the middle of it. What's the center of something? The core. So this is what they call a rubber core weight. That just means that the center of it, the core of it, is made out of rubber. <laughs> now, what makes this rather unique, this, this setup here, is there's a gap right there, right? You guys see that gap in the weight? See who that gap is in the web? Now, what you want to do is you want to put the line in there. Oh, little guy, can we get you to step back? There we go, thank you. All right, now, put the line right here inside that little gap, all right? Now, hold down on this and twist. Now, with this one, you want to pull up and twist. Okay, now what that does, you see how that is right now? All that line is wrapped around that rubber piece in the middle. So, when the fish is pulling on it, let's say he's fighting my hands, the fish right here. He's pulling on it like this. There's no weak spot in the line. Like when you tie it on some of those weights, in that knot, there'll be a weak spot. So with this rubber core, there's no weak spot in there. It acts like a little shock absorber, kind of. Any questions? No, good, okay, let's move on. Now, don't ever, remember, always be careful with the hook. That way you don't walk by them and get hooked. Now, don't ever squeeze these down with a pair of pliers right here, because then your weight's gonna get jacked up. Ah, that guy's playing dominoes up there. So anyway, oh, no. anyway guys, uh, you can always pull this off and then put this back in your tackle box. That way you got it for next time when you go fishing. Okay, now this next setup is the rocker loop one. Where's our drop here? Okay. Oh no, it's not right here. Okay. This is called a torpedo sinker because it's shaped like a torpedo and it goes straight down. It's pretty cool design on these. You know how you got some of those square ones or some of the ones look like the teardrop, they're all round, they flip around like this and they're going down, they just get you all tangled up. This one here, it's a torpedo sinker so it just shoots straight down through the water and you don't get tangled up. Now, a good way to tie this is what's called the dropper loop setup. All right, these are really easy right here. Real simple, okay? You get the line like this, see how I'm holding that? You pull it out like that, so you got that loop, and you make a sideways peace sign like this, okay? Then you wrap it around your finger, okay? Your two fingers, then you come through this twice. And then you pull on it, right? And it makes this loop right here. You can make them bigger or smaller, however you like. But it makes that loop. You guys see that loop right there, made? Now, you get the eye of the weight. And you pinch this down and push it through. You push it through there like that. Then you bring the weight underneath it. And you drop it down. Now, see how this one works? Let's pretend my hand is the bottom of the ocean and you're getting ready to catch a fish. And my hand's the fish. See how the line goes straight to the tip of the rod and the weight's down here? See how you can feel the fish? That's how these ones work. These ones work really good when we're rock fishing or even inside your, uh, closer to shore. But, you know, if you're, of course, if you're going to be in shallower water, you're going to want to use less weight. You're going to be in deeper water, you put more weight on or use a bigger one. Any questions on the dropper loop setup? Yes? Does it matter on which side it's on? No, it doesn't matter which side. It doesn't matter at all. All right. Now, guys, one more setup. These are like the three most popular setups that we use.
This is, uh, somebody mentioned it earlier, an egg sinker. This is what an egg sinker looks like. See that? Kind of shaped like, a, uh, like an egg. But there's a hole going through it. That's why I call it a sliding egg sinker. See that hole right there, guys? That's where your line goes through. And of course, you don't pinch this one down either. This one was designed to go through your line like this. Like that. That way a fish, let's pretend the hook's over on this side, that way the fish will take it and it'll go right through so you can feel the fish, feel the bite and all that right through your line. But this will slowly let it sink down because sometimes you want your line, your bait, to go down real slow. And that, you know, because sometimes the fish are suspended so you don't want to just sink right down. You don't want to drop your bait past the fish if they're up high on the surface. And another way to do that is just use like a smaller one of these or even just a straight hook and that's called fly lining. Okay guys. Do you guys know what kind of bait we use? Well, what? Squid, anchovies, sardines. Yes. All right, you're back with an A plus now. <laughs> All right. Now guys, we we use uh, the sardines, anchovies, and of course the squid. Now. There's a few safety precautions that you use when you come up to hook a bait. Now I'm gonna go over it with you. Now, see, he's coming handy. You know guys, you're gonna, you get into fishing, eventually you're gonna have a tackle box. You know, cause you're gonna be buying all kinds of lures and hooks and weights and all kinds of stuff like that. You definitely want a pair of these in your tackle box. And you just put a little bit of oil on here, right here, that way they won't get all rusty inside your box. But these definitely come in handy, so you got you should have a pair of these in your tackle box. Okay, now, can everybody look along the rail back there, on the rail, and you see those numbers and the little notches, little notches in the rail? And they're different colors. That's because we do rotation. So on this boat, it's one through 11. However, like on a day to try, there's four people, so it's one through 25. But, you step back a second there for a minute. Thank you. See number one right there? You got a little slot. This is a real important rule. Always leave your rod at the rail when you come up for a bait. Okay? Now, the reason why is because the boat's rocking around. We got a bunch of people on the boat. And if everybody bought their, brought their rod up to the rail, and they have their hooks in their hand trying to get a bait, everybody's doing this and trying to dig around, catch a bait, they're not paying attention. Somebody might kick your rod and that hook will come flying up and might stick into somebody, or your finger, or your nose, or your elbow, or wherever. So, you always want to leave your rod at the rail, it's a safety precaution. Now, excuse me, second gentleman. Let's just keep that right there. Now, this is what you want to do. You want to leave your rod there, you want to come up for a bait. When you come up for a bait, there's certain ways you grab them. You don't want to come right on top of them. You see how the colors on this? This is a sardine right here. You see the colors down the bottom? They're silver. See how the colors on, are darker on the top? Does anybody know why that is? Yes. Because then predators can't see them when they're looking up or down because then uh, the bottom looks like the sky, top looks like the ocean. Outstanding. Awesome. A plus. A plus. <laughs> Nailed it. All right. That's exactly correct. Because of the predators. It's camouflage for them. So, when you're coming down on them, birds are also predators. When you're a bait fish, when you're a sardine, you're like the lowest form of life on the totem pole. You're like way down here in the food chain. So that means everybody's trying to eat you. You got fish trying to eat you, you got sea lions trying to eat you, you got birds trying to pick you off from the surface trying to eat you. So these guys are skittish. They're, I mean, they're always moving around and frantically and they have every right to be because they are the lowest of the food chain. Now, when you come down on them like this, there's a certain way you grab them out of the tank here. This is the main tank right here. See this big one, that's the main tank. That's where all the fish are. Then the crew will 
net them, put them in the little these what these things right here, which are called troughs. Now, when they put them in the troughs, that's where you come and grab them. You don't want to try and grab a bait out of this big one here, because the reason why is you want a fresh lively bait. And if you can grab one out of here, you don't want to use it. It's not worth using. So, what you want to do, guys, is you want to catch them out of here. Now, there's a certain way you do this. You come down underneath them, and you little guys can use two hands, but I'm big, so I can use one. You come down underneath them, kind of chase them to a corner, come up underneath them, and boom, right up like that. See how easy it is? And when you hold them, see how I'm holding them like this? See that, guys? I'm covering his eye. I, I got a grip on him so he won't. Yeah, bounce out of my hand, or wiggle out of my hand, but I cover his eyes, so it's not wiggling as much. But I don't squeeze down on them, don't squeeze them hard, hold them gentle. And then you come over here to where your rod is, okay guys, let's clear back. Alright, you see their nose right there? That's where the hook goes, there's a piece of cartilage there. You don't want to hook it through the eyeballs, you don't want to hook them through the uh, internal organs, you don't want to hook them through the backbone, because that's going to kill your bait. You want to keep back here, here, fresh lively bait, because fresh lively baits get bit. So when you hook them through the nose to that little piece of cartilage, they stay fresh and lively. This guy's already dead, so it doesn't matter, but anyway, that's how they are. They're really wiggling like that. There we go. That's how you hook them on there. You guys see that? All right, cool. Now, Okay. All right, guys. Now, could you, yeah, where's my uh, helper at? Here, can you bring me up a strip of squid during the head? All right, guys. Everybody, get back along the rail here again. Everybody, back along the rail. Sorry. Oh, in a hole. Okay guys, now, this right here is a whole squid, that's what a whole squid looks like, right here. The deckhand will cut these up and strip them up so you can use these. These work better than a whole squid. These get fed way better than a whole squid, okay? Mm -hmm. See that? Or here, both feet on the deck, honey. What's that? But here, gotta get down. Excuse me? But y'all tell you to go after these and you have huge yellow tail, right? That's live ones. Yeah, Not dead, frozen ones. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. That is a good point. On occasion, these do work whole. Don't get me wrong, but 99% of the time they bite on this. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about bass or rockfish, sheephead. Anybody ever touched squid before? You guys yeah. want to touch squid? Huh? Touch it. Yeah. Touch it. Touch it. There we go. You guys want to touch it? Touch it. Touch it. Feels like rubber, huh? Feels like wet rubber. It's just squid. Touch it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> this is chicken. This is slimy. Yeah, it is. This is good. That's what most fish are. See, there's nothing to be afraid of. Most fish are slimy. Mama. Uh -huh. yeah. Just like the lizard. Anybody else want to see? I caught one. You caught a what? A lizard. Was it big? I got like a one foot. That's big. That's pretty big. All right, guys. Now, there's certain ways we hook these. Okay, this is the head and this is the strip. Now, what some people, I prefer using the strips. I've seen more fish caught on the strips, but some people like the heads, they like to use the head. So when you're hooking them, right, this is how you bait them up. Right between the eyes, boom, just come straight across like that, and hook it just like that. See how that is? You guys see how that, that's how you hook it. You guys see how that? Yeah. Now, the reason why you hook it like this is because all their tentacles down there float around and it looks alive. So the fish thinks that it's alive, it comes up and gobbles it down. Any questions? Nope, all good? Okay. <laughs> now, this is the strip. Okay? This is what you want to do when you hook one of these strips on. Woo! Alright. Hit it like this, hook it through. 
once like this. See how I got that? Now come around like that and go through twice. There we go, just like this. You want that little piece dangling. You want that little piece dangling off there. And the reason why is because it makes it look like it's alive. And that'll, this what's called presentation. So then the fish is gonna think that it's alive and it's trying to come up and gobble. All right, any questions about squid? No, okay, cool. All right, guys. Right here. Let's get in line. Get in line. One line right here, and then one line from here to there. All right. So you guys get in the line here. 